I'm at the Crocker Art Museum to check out the sugary details on the candy store gallery that's bringing the funk. So instead of talking about it, let's check out these sweet details. So I'm here with Scott Shills to talk about the candy store gallery. So Scott, tell us about the candy store gallery. So the Candy Store Gallery was a, a gallery in Folsom, California, and it was founded in 1962 by a woman named Adeliza McHugh. And she ran the gallery for 30 years. So it, in 2022, we thought it would be appropriate to have this double anniversary of 62 to 92 when she was open. But Adeliza was not your typical gallerist. She looked like everybody's favorite grandmother, and she wasn't an art expert, but she was an art appreciator. And when she opened the gallery, she opened it as a candy store. Her family had an almond nougat recipe that she really liked, and she thought, oh, I could sell that. Well, the health department didn't much care for her having this candy store. And so they shot her down, essentially. And so she said, well, well what am I gonna do? I'll, I'll, maybe I'll sell art. And it was a little house on Sutter Street in Folsom. And she approached her first artist, and Irving Marcus was his name, and he, she had seen his work at the Crocker back in 1962. And she said, I'd like to show your art. And he said, well, what's the name of your gallery? And, and she said, the, she had to think, the candy, <laughs> the candy store. And so after that, she was able to sell the most cutting edge avant-garde art being made in California in Folsom. And it's just the most unlikely gallerist and the most unlikely place for what she was selling. And yet she made it work for 30 years. Oh my goodness. And I mean, we're looking at some of the artwork in here. It really grabs your attention. How were the artists selected? So she um, chose her artist because she felt she liked art that had a kick, she called it. And so she liked things with color, with broad graphic imagery. She liked things with a message. You don't see a lot of abstraction in what she showed. Um, it had to really move her. And the show is really organized around the, the artists that she exhibited. So everybody in this show was an artist that she showed at some point. Some of them she showed many, many times. Some of them she might have only shown once or twice. And was it correct that she wanted a diverse group of artists to showcase she their work? She absolutely did. You know, she, um, for her era in particular, she was really, you know, showing a, a lot of women artists. She was showing a lot of um, artists of different backgrounds and ethnicities. And so she was ahead of her time uh, in doing so, and good for her because you know this this show really features the, the diversity of what she was doing and there were really two big groups that she was showing and that was the professors at, at UC Davis and the professors at Sacramento State um, but there were also people from Canada that she was that were coming down and showing and sometimes these artists went to, went there there was a group of artists from Chicago known as the Chicago Harry who and a lot of the artists she was showing there when she first started, weren't very well known, but by the time she closed her gallery, some of them were internationally famous. Wow, and it's exciting to know that there's local ties to this as well. And I understand the exhibit showcases funk art. Could you explain what that is? <laughs> a lot of the art in the, in the show is considered funk, and funk was a, a term that was used to describe art that was so often humorous and ribald and blatantly gross and um, sort of crudely made and it was a thing that really got very associated with the ceramics department at UC Davis. Some of the painters didn't think they were funk artists so they started another thing called nut art, N-U-T. And so the nut artists and the funk artists and then you throw in the Chicago Harry Who and you got a real mix, uh, you know, a very explosive mix of artists. Yeah, it sounds like you got a lot of fun happening here. And how long is the Candy Store Gallery open for? So this show is open until May 1st and um, it's it will never be assembled together again. So I hope people can really come see it because I think it's maybe the most fun show that we've ever done. And um, it's really thrilling to walk in and see all these artists and so many of them were friends and colleagues and they work together closely and we'll never have this moment, you know, where so much is assembled in one time and place. Well, you heard it from Scott himself. We gotta go and check out this fun gallery.